So before we get rolling with this video, I want to point out that Solus is not meant to be a server distro. I was told no less than three times on the Solus subreddit that Solus is not meant to be used as a server. However, rules never stopped me before, so why would I let them now? So if you haven't already guessed, in this video we're going to talk about running Solus as a headless server. So obviously since Solus is meant to be a desktop based distro, there's no pre-built server for it. Like a lot of distros out there, you can download the server version of that distro. Solus doesn't have something like that. So what I did is I downloaded the smallest image, which actually happened to be Solus Budgie. I installed it onto a spare server I had using the ordinary method with the graphic installer and everything. But in order to use Solus as a headless server, you need to install a couple things. Now by default, Solus does not come with an open SSH server. Now unless you plan on telnetting or some other archaic method of accessing your server, you're going to have to install the OpenSSH server daemon. And once the package is installed, you'll want to make sure that the daemon is actually enabled in System D. That means it's going to turn on every time the system boots. Now because I'm running this as a server, I want to keep the system resources as low as possible, so we want to boot into multi-user mode. By default, all desktops will boot into basic user or graphical target, I can't remember, but we want to switch the default target to multi-user. At this point, you could just keep installing the software you're going to use on your server, or you could go ahead and reboot. If you've set the default target to multi-user, when you reboot, you'll get the terminal. Because we didn't uninstall X or Budgie or anything, you could technically start X and log into the UI, but we're running a server, so we don't need to do that. Now, I didn't intend this video to be like a how-to set up Solus to be a server or anything, so let's bounce back over to the server that I already have set up, and let's do some things with it. So you can see I'm running Solus 3, and we're using like 90 megabytes of RAM or something like that. I've also got the Docker daemon running, and that accounts for probably 30 to 60 megabytes by itself. But Solus is super freaking lightweight. So if you're part of the EGIO Discord community, you might be familiar with a bot called Androji. Androji runs on Node.js, and for this video, I packaged him up as a Docker container, and I'm going to run his container here on the server. So Androji uses Redis for some caching stuff, so we need to get Redis running. Now this is kind of a weird use case because I'm going to be running Redis on the host, which is the Solus server. So when I start the Docker container, I have to tell it to use the host's network. It's not something you would normally do with Docker containers, but that's what we're doing for this video. So we go over the Discord server and we got Androji responding to things. Of course he won't respond to the rest command because I have to be in the right channel. So yeah, there's running a Redis instance and a Docker container on a headless Solus server. All right, now just for funsies, let's host something a bit more tangible. Let's try hosting my website, EGIO, from the Solus server. Now this one's not gonna be in a Docker container. I didn't set it up that way. It's just going to be a regular run-of-the-mill Ember app that we're gonna run here on the Solus server. I already pulled everything down. All I have to do is do Ember serve to actually launch it. So now that the server's running, I'll bounce over to the other tab and use curl to hit the endpoint. There's the raw HTML. We can see that it's running. Now let's open up Chrome on my workstation and actually hit the website. And there we go, we're hitting the website for my workstation. We'll go ahead and kill the server on the back end. And that's that. All right, so to recap for the folks that will inevitably point out that Solus is not designed to be a server, there's no official support for server stuff or anything like that. Yes, I know, and I hope that people who consider running Solus as a server also know that. And there's no guarantee for like security patches and stuff like that, or maybe there is, but it's not designed to be a server, so you're really on your own. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video, have fun, and thanks for watching.